Wait, no, you lied. You lied to me. Oh no, I've been we're lied. lied to. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. This is Between the Rolls, our Tuesday night show where we talk about the games that happened last week. We're going to talk about what's going to happen this week and we're going to talk about something completely random in the meantime. Uh, since this was taken totally by surprise for me, I'm going to allow everybody to introduce themselves, not starting with me, but starting with David. David, tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started. Hi, I'm David. I like sunset walks on, on beaches. Um, just kidding. Um, hi, I'm David. I'm on um, one of the hobos on Murder Hobo. I play in the Cacophony Show. On every other Thursday night, I play as Zadar, the arcane trickster changeling. I also play uh, in our Calamity campaign, uh, both A and B campaign. I play in the A campaign, Ingve, the Ravenkin, and uh, also I play um, Crow in uh, the Boys from Toe Town, Calamity B. So uh every once in a while you can catch me with uh, a one shot on any of our saturday given one shots and uh, yeah and most tuesdays here on between the rolls that's it <laughs> and you're muted kyle <laughs> that sounds about right frank why don't you introduce yourself Hi, I'm Frank, a uh, longtime gamer, sometime DM. I'm a professional mini painter. I, oh, wait, I was channeling Carol there for a second. Yeah, you were. <laughs> hey, you got to watch out there. Uh, oh, you're going to get an email. I'll, I'll hear from her later. Uh, hi, folks. Uh, if you don't recognize me, thanks for joining us. This must be your first time. Uh, I'm Frank, uh, head DM, I guess, head torture chaotic uh writer for adventures in Bilbar and uh the dumbass brainchild behind this show that's me <laughs> yeah that sounds about right uh, I, but saying brain and frank in the same sentence dumbass dumbass brain uh, yeah but brain is still in he used the modifier to qualify it there <laughs> i suppose yeah the opposite All right. of brain. Oh. The anti-brain. There you go. Or testicles? uncle brain. Uncle brain. I'm not sure. Uncle brain. What? Anti-brain. Uncle brain. Oh. Or, that, oh. or if in that D&D terms, <laughs> instead of elder brain, the elder ass. There you go. There you go. Kyle, how about you? Hi, I'm Kyle, and I am the DM for Cthulhu Rises, Everyone Dies, the show that is taking place this Thursday night, just before Critical <clears throat> Role, because that's starting again, and now I have to actually end my show on time. Otherwise, people will be mad and grumpy. My players, my players will be mad. Your players. Yeah. yeah, honestly, I don't care about the rest of you, but if the players start getting mad and grumpy about, hey, we're missing our Critical Role time, it's... It's all downhill from there. Yeah, last week was kind of dicey, man. <laughs> uh, well, last... No, that was oh, us. Yeah. That, that was, was you. That was your fault. That was you were so dicey. <laughs> yeah, and it was their, their I episode. I pulled line. it through. <laughs> <laughs> That's the we problem, did. We ended Frank. on You're time. You're supposed to stop. <laughs> uh, so. I pulled it off. And you're already on Twitch, guys. It's just a quick click button. Yeah, you can even keep our window up as you watch Critical Role. Uh, sure. But we're not here about Critical Role. Uh, we are here about Between the Roles. Uh, before we get started, we'd like to say... How does the spiel start? Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap like the shirt, phone case, duvet cover, shit like Shirts. that, uh, the link is down there. And then you go into the sponsors. And then I go into the sponsors. Uh, our sponsors tonight are Dirty Dog Dice. Have you ever wished that you had a D20 made out of a piece of dog poop? Holy crap, that's a new one. Wow. Oh, that is a new one. Ooh, it's rich. Ooh, I like that. It's the cracked, cracked version. Was that 3D printed or is that a mold? Yeah, this is just a 3D print. Oh, okay. Oh. This, is now, the, this is the master copy. Got do it. you like layer in some like epoxy or whatever in there to fill in the cracks with like some gold or something like that? I suppose you could. Okay. Anyway, I, I got the. I, I do things half ass, so it doesn't really matter to me. 
Well, obviously, yeah. I wasn't talking about you doing the work. I was talking about you. She's a professor. A professional. She's the professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me? Eh, whatever. Close yeah. enough. <laughs> Just make sure that when you ask for one of their dies, you put in whether you are a forever DM or a forever player. That way she knows where to weight it uh, to the 20s or to the 1s. Wow. Uh, and if you think that sounds fishy, then you should hear about Odd Fish Game and their Ooh, adventure nice. Nice segue. Sense. Thank you very much. I have that written down right here. Adventure nice. Sense, Carol's Fence Post, New Smell. Uh, wow. If your game stinks, check out their Adventure Sense, you know, uh, bring in the uh, oral factory senses to it. It's not just sound. It's not just sight. Got to get the smell in there to really believe you are down in the worst, the most vile of putrid sewers or whether there is a dangerous carol lurking about her fence post. Other than that, they said... Have... Huh? Are you cutting out, or is it me? Huh? I think I was cutting out. Okay. I don't um, know. I don't know. Uh, you sounded fine here. Oh, but... good. I'm great, then. Yeah, never mind, then. Uh, they me. also have several other projects going. How to RPG with your cat. Their Kickstarter just finished. But there's always some way to continue on with the Kickstarter afterwards. It seems like to me, you just got to look to it. Go to their site and check that out. Other than that, they also have the Shine Project. Uh, if you are writing up a wonderful story, but you are starting to hit dead ends, or you're thinking, man, you know what? This wonderful 1,000-page novel is just not enough. I could make it 2,000 pages I need to make a series that would make George R. R. Martin cry. Ooh. And I suggest the Shine Project. Is that not a real person? I've done that before. It is. George R. R. Tolkien. There nice. you go. Nice. <laughs> or as as he was known to his friends, Georgie Tolkien. Hey, Georgie Georgie Tolkien, Boy. yeah. <laughs> It asks a lot of questions that you never thought to ask yourself and honestly uh, has given me an entirely new perspective on how I do storytelling and writing thanks to those questions. And that's our wonderful sponsors tonight. Let's go ahead and get into the show. We talk about last week first. Last Thursday, uh, we had Cacophony. Cacophony. Yes. David, why don't you tell us what happened to Cacophony? Well, Cacophony, we might as well have called the episode The Power of Cheese, because that's exactly what it was. It was one big cheese fest, folks, uh, literally and figuratively. <laughs> I mean, so, so yeah, Camille and Zadar are exploring the city uh, Nathian. I think that's the name we decided to find. <laughs> that's how we're going to pronounce it. The gnomish, the the wonderful gnomish city or city of gnomish wonders. Uh, we check into, uh, yeah, uh, Millie's place, who is, uh, you know, a uh, member of the D's Nuts family. And uh, yeah, it turns out to be the what? It's a royal family right there in the team. Aunt to, was he the, the aunt um, to um, Famanda? Famanda, yeah. So. Uh, we ran into Millie. We may, ran into her her bouncer, <laughs> the security for the the inn, the Warforged. There's Warforged in in the city of Nathan, which is awesome because in all of Cacophony, we've never encountered something like this before. There were lots of races uh, uh, to encounter. I mean, the Minotaur weren't even out of place there, so it, it's such a diverse city. So it may be gnomish in, in founding and settlement, but it's, uh, it accommodates you know, the multitude of people. Now, there. I might be biased, but that sounds like the most enlightened, greatest city in the world of Philbar ever. Well, and it kind of is. If your character <laughs> is from there, they are automatically going to be better than any of the other characters written. But that's right. that's that's a bias, you know. I, I'm going to write in that these Dockabells were child molesters. <laughs> oh. oh god! And that's why they were separated. Luckily, I don't think it's in the genes. Oh man, yeah. Considering he's going to stay with a bunch of priests, he doesn't have a 
Oh my god. <laughs> well, anyway, we follow up the episode. Uh, Camille and Zadar go to the cheese festival. They are having a cheese festival in Nathan. And Camille is in all her glory. She loves it. I mean, it's it's anything that she could have imagined, every possible uh, uh, concoction of cheese. I mean, we even found a cheese fountain. So, uh, but we get wrapped, um, we get approached, uh, you know, since we're not from Nathan's to be judges into uh, of the cheese uh, competition. Uh, so, we gladly agree to it because, you know, we get to taste the cheese. Uh, unfortunately, some of the cheese. Cut, cut the cheese. Nah, I wasn't going to say that. I wasn't going to go there, but yeah. So anyway, uh, so with us trying to be impartial judges, we find out that the fix is in uh, <laughs> through some high signs that some of the contestants were making towards the judges uh so yeah that seemed not to go anywhere we found out that there were you know that the people that we that we knew were cheating were actually good people but camille wasn't buying it so she told them to fuck off so anyway literally <laughs> literally yeah literally so uh yeah so we ended the episode with us winding down with uh stopping at uh a really nice restaurant called the cabbage patch and uh sitting out on the terrace you know enjoying the sunset enjoying our fruit platter that was provided for us when we see the mascot from the festival uh walking home and being stalked by this group of teenage gnomes and uh yeah it's just like zadar and camille had to intervene it was kind of comical on how how they intervene and frank says we got to wait to see who to find out the the person inside the the cheese suit was so it was a big cheese head the big cheese head <laughs> it was. uh and it ended there so uh we we turn we turn in at the we turn in at the end and yeah it was just a wonderful day in uh nathan so it was a long time coming. We really needed a good day. Everything else uh, through this whole adventure has just been for shit. So <laughs> wait until tomorrow. And you yeah, all hell's going to break out. Head. Well, all hell will break out when everybody, you know, with the sewage system and Nathan from the cheese. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we had to check on the, uh, there were two the sewer technicians. Uh, concerned about the annual cheese fest. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And you found out there's a wanted uh, individual in town. Yes. Yes, that we have. I, I forgot to mention, yes. Uh, some A presence from our previous adventures in Cacophony has made itself known in, in the city of Nathan as the, the Order of Assassins that uh, Zadar and Camille encountered. Uh, yeah, and apparently they're searching for one of our friends. One known pirate by the name of Rosa. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. He's fine, I'm sure. Fine, I'm she sure. can handle herself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah the she order got a nice new that ship. How big was that ship anyway, Frank, that she got? Was it big? I mean, we're talking Goonies? Single mass. Single, Single mass. mass. Yeah. Okay. All right. Remember, she sailed off on her own. Yeah, I was going to say. I, I, I couldn't mean, give her like, anything huge. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> she's going to be like uh, Jack Sparrow pulling into port in Nathan, <laughs> you know, with it sinking. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't the only uh, familiar face you're gonna find in that city. I I don't doubt it. I you're do gonna not find doubt it. Dewey Duckamel. Oh man, this is such a great crossover. I mean, we had Lord Tor Torgal in the previous episode, so and uh, Lady Torgal. So I mean, this is this is great. So yeah. your old flame, Kyle. <laughs> uh, yeah. That jerk. I or don't. Fl flame is in crispy critter flame. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Did you set her or the manor on fire? <laughs> they set the manor on fire after she got they killed. They set the manor on fire, not Dewey. Oh, and God. she uh, she got pierced in the throat, if I were to remember, because we were going to get married. Uh, and then you decided, no, Dewey's a great character. I've got to kill her. Mm-mm. And God. ruined Dewey's life. Uh, yeah, because and... yeah, Dewey was going to retire. Dewey was <laughs> absolutely retire in that wonderful world uh with lady torgal anyway that's that's memories of cacophony and a different campaign altogether but yes we'll see how really intertwined they get uh uh Oh, oh my! That was oh, very right. that, that was kind of like jammed I, I meshed, in there. I meshed the shit. <laughs> <laughs> What would have nice. been great if you broke one of your fingers while you were attempting to do that? I actually, I was bowling last weekend, and that one has tendon problems. And oh it, man, it hurts to do that. So, oh man, I don't need to break anything else. Well, <laughs> I, also, I also pulled a butt muscle, so you know, there's there's my medical. Oh, history. Yeah, those are hard to stretch. Yeah, yeah. Well, was, there, my head was putting a lot of pressure on it, so. Were you shoving your head head up your? Butt? My head's usually up my ass. So <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Just a reminder: this is for mature audiences only, and for my kid who's sneaking behind the curtain right there. I know you're there. Go to bed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's singing. The spider <laughs> down came the rain. Wash the spider out. Anyway, uh, speaking of, um, gosh, you know, I had something and then I forgot it. So uh, last Saturday was a rerun of a, Mm -hmm. that was a second running of a show, but we've already talked about that. So let's move on to the boys of Margu. Speaking of old men being unable to move their asses, uh, what happened to the Margu boys? Uh, The Margu boys celebrated our 300th gaming episode, 300. and, you know, we've got, I think this is episode 138 of the talk show. So, you know, uh, Bonanza, we're coming for you. So, <laughs> or Gunsmoke, I can't remember which. One of them real, ran really long time. Simpsons, so, yeah. you're going to cut and leave before we're done. Well, yeah. and you know, we're never for, catching up for, for our shows are two hours, and then this is an hour. So, eh, you know, yeah. air, air time, we're hanging. Uh, the Margu guys, uh, this is the B-side uh, because... A couple of the players cannot make it, so we just decided to make a new campaign. Probably use the new campaigners as bounty hunters to go kill the old campaigners because I'm an asshole. <laughs> uh, these guys uh, were former guardsmen on the caravan route. Uh, caravan route is now under new administration. Uh, probably billionaires or some assholes like that. Uh, they fired all the old expensive guards and hired new guards. So uh, these guys are retired or fired kind of thing. So they have gone off into the wilderness. They uh, heard stories of a serpent temple in the mountains. Uh, they went there. Uh, they aren't having a lot of a lot of good fortune here. Uh, the The first time, two weeks ago, uh, they couldn't stand on their feet, slid all over the place, took a lot of damage. Uh, This time around, they went through a uh, gargantuan cave filled with piercers, uh, CR1s, if I'm not mistaken, maybe (laughs) CR1s, and they did not fare well against these uh, death from above creatures. Uh, Then they went ahead and found a wyvern, and uh, took it down in two rounds. So feast or famine for these guys. They are still stuck in the middle of the mountain. Uh, They still have to get to the other side. They've only found two pillars dedicated to serpents. So spoiler alert, they probably already passed that danger. Uh, We'll see if they go back. Uh, But they did find two merchant wagons and the youngest murder hobo we have, who is I think 13, uh got uh, glorious two kills two very important kills so she got the coup de gras on them uh these guys are having their problems even though they're fourth level but uh so far they're still on their feet <laughs> uh we will see how they do this coming sunday uh when they have to face a yeah, i'll say considerable foe 
uh, if they're watching, uh, they know I'll just pull something out of my ass, but it's actually already written. Uh, I'd also like to go ahead and make a quick plug for this coming Valentine's Day, February, uh, Murder HoboCon 2. Uh, we're going to do it two days, Saturday and Sunday. We're going to run it from 8 a.m. Saturday all the way to 10 p.m. Sunday. That way our overseas uh, guests, fans, and supporters uh, can do it in their own time zone and not worry about being tired. Uh, again, mark it on your calendars. It's Valentine's Day weekend. Valentine's is on Monday. But uh, our con is going to be for a charity. Uh, we have a charity in mind. We just have to contact them. Uh, again, we don't want your money. Uh, we're giving it all to charity, not to Kyle. So uh, I am that, a charity case. Let's be fair. You are a charity case. I'll That's give you true. That. Uh, <laughs> Don't and remember, that, guys, this Valentine's Day murder hobo con. Murder hobo con is going to steal your heart. Nice. Ah, okay, that's it. Yeah, that, that's it for the Margu campaign. That's it for the Margu campaign. That's last week. Uh, this week we do have the uh, campaigns going on. We have cred on Thursday. What I forgot. Yes, I'm going to eat something. My sandwich is in the refrigerator right now. I had an argument. I wasn't hungry, and then I'm kind of getting a little hungry hey, now. God but I spoke, and she asked if you were hungry. Now, see, they, they can't hear her, so. So I'm crazy. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, Frank's wife was just checking in on me, making sure that I was going to eat, and uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, uh, someone cares and it's not my wife who is I am you wouldn't believe it <laughs> wow nice all it's right, all you right. Don't hear. that's the fat joke that I needed right now <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this Thursday we have the cred campaign the party continues on its dangerous adventures it had just recently uh, 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 gotten through a maze uh, where they had to deal with a particularly strange creature that we were very worried about. And now they go deeper into the caverns. On Saturday, you have the Calamity Campaign. I usually fall asleep Saturday, so I don't watch it. But you know those guys are causing trouble or calamity. And uh -huh. someone is probably murdering and torturing people. That person's name is Scott. Uh, Scott's Scott's always doing it. And a toddler is what I heard. A toddler is murdering and torturing people. I'm not sure. Which is accurate. That's that's what my child is doing right now. Uh, uh, but before they all wind up dead, just remember that there's a bright spot after death, and that is undeath. And to start that topic tonight, we have Frank. Hey, it's Halloween this weekend, folks. So we thought, eh, why not? Uh, I'm lazy. I'm a lazy writer. Uh, we'll just talk about Undead. Uh, oh, we've got cool. several topics that we want to go ahead and hit, let the panel go ahead and discuss it, and see what we come up with. As many of you know, a lot of my one-shots come from these shows. Uh, still waiting to do my favorite villain, uh, and that is upcoming. Uh, tonight's topic, as Kyle's pointed out, is the undead. So all three of us are DMs. Uh, we know how this works. Uh, what What is your favorite undead to throw at characters? <laughs> uh, we'll start with Kyle because David and I did most of the talk in the first half hour. So Kyle, oh, what's come the, on, what's... I. <clears throat> this is where you give me an outline, and you have to let me think about it. I did. I gave it to you last week, and then, uh, then I canceled the no, show. No, you didn't, because so. I wasn't going to be on the show last week. Well, that's your fault. Apparently. Maybe if you were more dedicated, that, that wouldn't have been an issue. That, uh, that is true. So that we're, we're going to go uh, favorite undead, and the discussion on that. Uh -huh. uh, do horde or solo uh, oh. to throw at them. And then the undead is a friendly plot device uh and as kyle talks i'm going to go ahead and transfer this into chat so that he can ponder which one he wants and david can also ponder which one he wants and each one of us will take a different option i will pick last because i didn't get off my ass in time so that being said kyle favorite uh undead to use against your players okay 
Uh, this is actually just going to be a general thing. My favorite <clears throat> undead is the undead template. And if you don't actually read the DMG, um, you will entirely miss this thing. Yes, I'm calling you out, Frank. <laughs> No, I read uh, the second edition one. I got this. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. No, um, one of the things that I recently uh, 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 rediscovered was in the DMG that they give you a template for creatures. It's like, oh, well, if they're a construct, if they're, um, here are some modifiers to kind of help you change and make it seem more like thing. And I discovered the undead template, and I can honestly say, I can't stop myself from finding magical monsters or just regular beasts and being like undead, the undead, undead version. Yes. And so you're screwed if you got a cleric I in the party. Have a favorite is something I cannot do right now because I'm just enjoying the fact that I can turn anything into an undead creature, and it brings me so much joy. I think right now. Uh, the undead um, garfish is going to be one of my favorites here. The party undead is not going to encounter it for cred, but uh, I created a giant garfish in a previous one ship, one shot. Wow! Yeah, the that's, is only that's there. my opinion. <laughs> yeah, we we played your one shits. We know what they're like. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You should. Oh, oh, but man. I created a giant Just car. one letter off. <laughs> one vowel. <laughs> I'll never live this down. Just like the time I... Okay, anyway. No, but uh, slapping a, a, a fish with undead sharks are obvious, but it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. let's let's get an undead quipper uh, uh, swarm or the undead gar. An undead turtle. That just seems adorable. You flip it over on its back, it's completely harmless. Until, you know, it just reaches out and breaks its neck off and then it starts kind of nodding its head towards you. Uh, hey, you only have like an hour to get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the death snail, man. So, Damn. yeah. No, my favorite undead at this moment are just taking things that no one would really think to make undead and then to just slap the undead template on it. And it brings me so much joy and amusement <gasps> oh my gosh no i'm sorry i'm gonna expand on this even more i'm gonna keep talking uh uh i run a campaign for a group of friends privately uh uh and uh we are running an adventure from um the candle keep mysteries book of the raven uh it's lackluster and so i decided you know what the surrounding land is now this undead wasteland and they end up going to this manor house a uh, hunting lodge essentially but actually fancy and not just that but there are mounted animal heads on the wall and absolutely i made sure they came to life and bit one of the players oh uh, yeah you got to have that <laughs> yeah absolutely so i want to say thank you to evil dead sam Raimi. Mm -hmm. Bruce Campbell uh, uh, and undead uh, mounts on the wall are amazing. Mm -hmm. Do it. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's actually stats for that now too. Oh, are there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I got a whole thing of like undead creatures from my favorite resources for the undead, Curse of oh. Strahd and Ravenloft. So, yeah, in so in in Ravenloft, yeah, there's undead just heads. <laughs> all right well you talk about that i'm going to ignore the chat you're gonna have to look it up <laughs> undead heads yep no. uh david uh favorite undead and why oh well i just held it up all of them all oh strong the vampire. uh not i mean vampires i mean one of the things that i like is that the genre uh, the genre for the subject matter and also just the bestiary as far as vampire-like creatures uh has just exploded <laughs> so and um yeah i mean i i do like i i like them as an undead um primarily uh the other things that i like is i like the reanimated you know so the constructed 
I like those too. Oh, so. uh, like um, like uh, oh. Frankie, the character that I created for that one shot. <laughs> Frankie. Yeah, uh, when we were, we were first trying out the undead lineages, and that's that's when it, I when that came out, I could not wait to play that type of character. So, but but yeah, um, uh, vampire seems to be my go-to because I mean I've I when I started playing D and D again, I mean I was unfamiliar with Ravenloft and the whole lore behind it, and then uh my dm wanted to play curse of Strahd, and i was like okay you know halloween was coming up and it was a great time to start it so we played it and once i read read through it well played through it i didn't read through it while we were playing but as we finished the campaign and i read the book i was just like oh my god it was just like i was just so infatuated with the character of Strahd, you know because i mean the possibilities are just i mean just great i mean we know how the story ends but i mean it doesn't have to end that way with curse of shroud and i've come up as you know as a dm with um you know ideas for things for writing and it, if not so much a campaign at least a one shot or something like that and yeah it's just uh uh vampire creatures that are kind of like the fallout to that and one of the things that i have in mind is a way to bring strahd back so so needless to say that's you know that's one of the things because like during the battle with the with strahd in our campaign one of the things that i used to kill him is i took a stake and stabbed the dirt inside his coffin and it paralyzed him and that's how we were able to get the coup de gras on him well you know, that's his essence is in the soil. So I'll remove the stake possibilities, you know, so. Nice. Uh, I'll go ahead and go because Kyle still hasn't chosen uh, which mess he's going to do. Check your chat. Uh, oh. My favorite is the Draco Lich uh, because an undead dragon is just unholy terrifying, A. And B, if you ever saw or read uh, the Forgotten Realms books, Spellfire, uh, the artist, and my apologies to the artist, I, I didn't get the name, I know it, but I just can't remember it. Uh, the picture of the Dracolich going up against the adventurers is just terrifying, uh, just terrifying. I, I mean, it's bad enough that you have to fight a goddamn dragon, and then to just take away its skin and have it blow out necromantic breath weapons. Jesus Christ. It's like something that Kyle would uh, draw up on the drawing board. Uh, <laughs> That's but, true, yeah. yeah but yeah. the Dracolich has been around a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have used it twice, uh, but it is still my favorite. Uh, the fifth edition has the zombie dragon, uh, mm -hmm. which is a representative i'm glad you asked that because i was going to yeah. ask you about the zombie dragon compared yeah. to the dracolich and yeah yeah it's uh the zombie dragon in my opinion just looks like something that got the shit beat out of it but it's still dangerous whereas the dracolich the bleached bones the necromantic blue light uh, as depicted in starfire uh, mm. or spellfire i i just just terrifying and of course you tack on the well how big is the dragon add to your fear factor just outstanding in my opinion i have a lot of favorites but that one is clearly uh away uh from any of the others and what uh, about the dragon ghost mm -hmm. see I, no <laughs> are we getting too complicated there no Wait. they can be undead they can be liches that's it one of the 5e one of the problems i have with 5e is you don't have to do everything uh you know isn't that what 3.5 did right if, if you want to impress me play a human with two stats in single digits and survive you want to impress the shit out of me you do, do that because i grew up as with magic users having four fucking hit points at first level and one spell uh, and if you survive that, you can survive anything because that teaches you teamwork. 
uh, anymore uh, when your rogue or your fighter can cast spells. Really? Really? Oh, thanks, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't really a bash on you. Uh, the Margu guys have taught me that damn near anybody can use spells. And when a barbarian can use spells, Really? It's a thing now with things. So it, you know what? It's horseshit. Stop pandering to the lowest common denominator, uh, <laughs> Wizards of the Coast. Screw them. Okay. Put on your big girl and big boy pants and, you know, play something tough. Uh, that's right. why I always play idiot characters because I do not want to make that saving throw. Uh, okay. Each one of us have our favorite. Uh, and clearly, Kyle, Kyle likes them all. David and I have chosen one, but let me ask you this. If you're going to go up against a party, are you going to go ahead and focus on that solo creature as, as being it, or are you going to pick just a horde of undead, just wave after wave, chasing down the party, trying to kill them, uh, make them a fear factor lunch? Here's what tabletop, or at least D&D, does wrong is that we have two different zombies, essentially, in fiction in general. Your fast zombie, who is terrifying because one individual is stronger than your average character, faster than your average character. It's using everything without limitations, which is terrifying, as opposed to the slow zombie who is just coming and is always coming and will eventually break down the door and uh D, &D i think did zombies bad by not making that distinction and if you look at the stat blocks of a zombie they're running 60 feet in six seconds they are fast but then there's one hit from a party and chances are you took out the zombie uh, and so the question is, when you do those kind of things, um, making sure you pick the undead creature to best suit um, the style you're going for. And so if you're going for that relentless uh, uh, creature, then I think a horde is going to be your best bet, or a statless monster. And what I mean by that is... Oh my goodness. Uh, a statless monster in that the party has no hope of taking it out and they're not supposed to. Right. Um, and that kind of just builds into horror because uh, there's the saying, as soon as you put a stat on something, the players will find a way to kill it. And uh, was that in 2E, Frank? where they God. put the stats on the gods mm -hmm. and everyone started building player or characters who God could killers. kill gods. And it's just yeah. like, hmm. no. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I don't know how powerful you ever got in second edition, but the nine way- Nine was my highest. Nine was your highest. Uh, but no way you're getting to that far of a level and you're fighting off a god unless you're- DM was Cheating. just like, you know Cheating. what? Take a level 20 character and you're going to fight uh, Tiamat. Here you go. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. yeah. So when a, when you have a character uh, uh, like an undead or something like that, that's statless, do they get, do they still get legendary actions and things like that? Or Not in 2E. Not in 2E. Okay. Yeah, it's funny that you mention uh, Tiamat, Kyle, because one of my favorite things is how pissed off is the DM when he throws the first level characters against Tiamat in the animated series? I was going to say that. Hey, that's what happened in episode one, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the sign of DM burnout. But that's a yeah. different show. DM. All right, so Kyle says, yeah, Kyle says, depends. What do you say? What say you, David? The, the, you're gonna Horde have to give me the question again. Solo. Uh, I'm sorry. Horde or solo? Ooh, um, you solo. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll give you solo. <laughs> so, 
That, that was my Star Wars reference. Oh, one, okay. One Star All Wars right. reference of show. And that went right over my head. And I'm a Star Wars nerd. I was just like, ah. Oh. So if you should have did the laugh after it. I would have known, you know. So. <laughs> my, my throat hurts. Yeah. Anyway, uh, okay, well, well, let's go. Well, yes. one of the things that I mentioned is, okay, let, let's go with a horde, okay? Vampire Lord with the, with off, you know, with Spawn, you know? I'm, I'm good with that. And all kinds of variations of, you know, vampiric creatures. So, but one thing that uh, I did see that was really, really cool. It's one of the new monsters in the bestiary. Uh, it is a vampiric mind flare and all that. Ah. So, I think I was like, God damn it, gotta look that Not up. This now. one. Well, no, I've got. Ah. So, so, but the point I'm trying to make is yes. like a vampire with like a hive mind, you know. Pretty much. Oh, yes. A Borg. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. So. But yeah. It, so that would be my go-to in all that. If I was to do one, uh, do a campaign or a one-shot right now, I think I would explore the vampiric mind player with a hive mind. So okay. I think I would do that. That'll work. I'm, uh, I'm going to split the middle and take both sides because I think if you're going to have a uh, BBG... Uh, as an undead, you damn well better make it a big one. And uh, I, I know I'm going to offend a lot of Strahd fans here, but the vampire ain't it. Uh, it's uh -uh. the lich or nothing. Aslan. Uh, yeah, well, Aslan the, is. <laughs> the, the lich is your go-to. But you know what? Yeah. Uh, I did a 2E scenario 100 years ago. Uh, and it was going through a necropolis to find a specific item. And mm -hmm. it was always nice to watch the players run for the hills when everything started to come out of the crypt at once. Uh, now, you can do them in waves, but waves are never as scary as, holy shit, they're, the whole place. It's like aliens uh, when they're surrounded. The whole place is crawling. Uh, that is an instant fear especially when you use the crawling claws effect uh, oh, yeah. and just oh, bring out yeah. the, what, uh, one eighth CR. Uh, there were 10 points of experience, but they just come from fucking everywhere. Uh, they're <laughs> like undead kobolds. They're going to get you. Oh, man. Uh, so I, 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 I always like a BBG to be a solo uh but you know what? If, if you're going to fight your way through it. You're going to scare uh, something. <laughs> give yeah, them the horde. Yeah, Although, if, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, the other thing that a horde is also good for is to show players that they're actually powerful. You know, you have that fifth level cleric all these hands are sprouting out of nowhere and they're getting enveloped by it. And then all of a sudden, holy power, whoosh, everything's ash. And they're just plowing through this undead horde. And it's like, yeah, we're actually power. That's when you hit them with the lich. But mm -hmm. uh, hordes are good for showing um, players just how powerful their characters actually are. And so not mm -hmm. every combat has to be to the death. Uh, and undead are a great way to showcase a player who is usually taking a supporting role and just being like, yeah, no, they support you. But if it weren't for them and this undead horde, this would be a lot tougher. And so, yeah, undead are really good for that as well. Uh, and making it a horde kind of just places all this weight onto a single player's shoulders and you know, without a doubt, depending on if you're try trying to screw them over, they're going to just, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, well, one of the things I like about the Horde is mm -hmm. uh, it teaches you, and this is old 2E thinking, it's okay to retreat uh, because taking on all that necrotic damage, mm -hmm. uh, that wears thin on you. And uh, sometimes it's okay to run and rethink how you're going to go ahead and do this uh and i mean as a dm uh, how many are there oh there's a lot uh 
I'll tell you after everybody's in single digits. <laughs> how, many, <laughs> how many there are because uh, you guys are dumbasses so yeah. i'm just gonna go to town on you uh but yeah that's uh, it, and, and the other thing is if you're running a just a horde of undead they're probably controlled by maybe a lich but more likely a necromancer and uh, after their spells give in and let's face it a necromancer is still a wizard, so they're still kind of a sponge. Uh, eh, that guy's not long for this world. <laughs> yeah. So, so you might have a whole problem with the undead kobolds and then kill the necromancer in two rounds. <laughs> no, I was going to say, no, a necromancer yeah. is using all their spells to make as many undead mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank, what was the one where we realized that Carol absolutely hates cats and tabaxis? And I oh, brought undead that. tabaxi was, horde! Undead tabaxi horde. Did I make... well, that that was that the one. Undead tabaxi horde, or was that a different one? No, that was the one that Blake thought it was something that it was not. <laughs> yeah, so it was Blake, and, and I Carol, and say, myself. I didn't say a fucking word. I'm just like, <laughs> sure, what he said. <laughs> and I just made sure. Near the end of that, like, there were 32 zombies or skeletons <laughs> in our party, at which yeah. point Frank called it a night early. <laughs> oh, uh, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the horde is the horde is nice because yes. uh, it, it will scare the shit out of you because it's like uh, and th a nice trick for young DMs. Uh, a necropolis is is just a giant graveyard. Mm -hmm. But if it were consecrated by evil, those undead <laughs> come back up and your players go because <laughs> <laughs> they only knock them down for maybe 1d4 rounds. All of a sudden those bones are reanimated and holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i wanted to do an undead campaign in new orleans because the whole city is flooded with cemeteries yep. like we're surrounded by cemeteries Above ground or flooded. Too. Mm -hmm. or flooded yeah oh yeah well and i mean <clears throat> another way a dm can take uh that scariness of even just a single undead um shades do it all the time if they bring you down below to zero mm -hmm. you become an undead um mm -hmm. but you can yep. also homebrew that you know zombie bites are indeed infectious and you know now um yeah your cleric took out all those zombies except for that one little ankle biter and now you have to decide what you're doing with you know your infected buddy there how about an undead rust monster <laughs> oh, oh yeah that, wow. does it still eat rust does it still does eat it... metal though sure Wow. That is how rust elementals are created. created. Yeah, yes. that's right. Because there's just <laughs> enough necromantic energy from it that the rust rises up again. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, our final uh, topic, if you will, on this one is one of three choices. Uh, and each one of us is going to do a different one. Uh, if it sucks, uh, David came up with it. So, you know, you can blame him. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> we will. Well, start... I mean, did you notice that I tried to do a segue into David's? Yep, that that was nice. Uh, yep. Spoil, take his thunder. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll start again with Kyle. Uh, oh oh and shit! Dang it! We'll start with David. Uh, yeah. He took a uh, the undead is a friendly <laughs> plot device. Uh, is the undead a curse victim? Uh, TikTok before they turn it into undead. So, like Kyle was alluding to, maybe it's a zombie bite. And if they don't hurry, you know, there's mm -hmm. going to be a problem. But, David, it's yours to run with. What do you say? Well, I mean, the obvious one was what I, we just we just finished talking about the guy with the zombie bite, you know? So, <clears throat> you know. You have that, but uh, one of the things that I was thinking about is, remember the Stephen King novel, Thinner, and all that, where the gypsy curses the, the guy, and he's, he's a big fat guy, and he starts withering away? Hey, 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 we say portly. Portly, yes, or... thank you. 
uh, husky, 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 or zveltly challenged. That's so, right. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So I'm sorry. That was very, very not PC. Uh, you could uh, tweet at D and Devious and tell them what kind I'll of. I'll take the hit. I'm was. sorry. Hey, I mean, I used uh, to be heavy. Look, I'm going to create I am about sitting nine in this comfortable and... chair. I can't help but get bigger. There we go. <laughs> but uh, a lich uh, puts the same curse on a person, and uh, if they don't uh, complete an objective that the lich gives them and all that, they're going to become an, an undead, you know, as per the lich. You know, they'll start withering away, you know. So, so I thought about something like that, you know, okay. that could be very interesting. Tick tock, you're on the clock, you know, so. So it's a step and fetch mission? Mm-hmm. Step and fast fetch mission, you know, like uh, the lich is missing his phylactery. So, you know, something like that. Get okay. this for me and all that. But what you didn't know is you became the phylactery. <laughs> so, you Mr. know. Mr. Potter. That's it. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Uh, Kyle, what do you got? Cure the undead to bring back the land. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, with that idea, the um, the concept comes into uh, how did the undeathliness <laughs> spread? Um, is it an infection? Is it something that's a little less magical um and i've always been inclined to say uh no screw you the undead land is undead and it's going to take many years and many druids to give up their lives to bring the lead land back to life um but i mean let's talk pirates of the caribbean uh, Captain Barbosa stole Spanish gold and once it was mm-hmm. all returned and the blood money paid uh, he came back to life and that is yep. that was a great moment a great fantasy moment a great magical moment um, right. that can't be discounted so you know while I like the science of it it's you can't ignore the fact that you know sometimes good wins and <clears throat> price or evil wins i mean depending on your party makeup sometimes the party wins and they get more and the cost is not as much as they may have believed it was mm. of course you know you can kill a bunch of zombies to get distraught kill him and then turn around and just realize oh you know all those zombies are going to come back to life and you murdered them instead. (laughs) So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of drawbacks and it's one of those things you got to think about is just how does undead undeath spread in your land? Is it a wholly magical thing? Uh, uh, Is it more of a, uh, a, a magical virus um, that you know you just can't change at a certain point. Um, and that's my thoughts on that. Okay. Uh, I took the middle one. PC fell on hard times. Uh, I've actually incorporated all three of these ideas into recent scenarios, so I did kind of have the edge with this one, and it kind of encroaches on David's idea. Uh, with the curse victim but let's say the pc fell on hard times because the pc is a warlock and their patron uh they figured out that their patron's out to screw them over uh (laughs) and in order to save their own soul isn't that the first line in every patron contract though yeah it is (laughs) it it is i'll give you power i'm going to screw you over sign here uh, yeah, same here. Kyle, remember, I don't know how to play 5e, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, maybe this individual was duped into, you know, or misled thinking that the patron of love and sex was going to be a pie. 
not pay. Uh, and then no, it's kind of the god of syphilis or something uh and not wow. exactly what they thought at all and now they want to pull the shoot and get the hell out but uh you know their patrons not ready to let go of a willing soul who signed the contract in blood uh just because uh he played devil's advocate and thought he was getting one thing and was in reality getting another so they will go and put out the notice I need brave PCs here to go ahead and, you know, maybe take my place moving into Kyle's Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, the Somebody's sequel. got a captain. <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, you get that black spot on your hand and all of a sudden uh, I need 100 souls, uh, preferably blonde hair, blue eyed children. Uh, I'm looking for a cent uh, century of Nazis. Uh, and while most party members wouldn't give two shits about that, uh, maybe the, maybe they're Vikings instead, or maybe they're nice. Maybe they're uh, maybe they gathered all the children into an orphanage, a orphanage. And <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, that you is thought the emails long... to me would be bad, Frank. <laughs> yeah, th that is a long standing joke. Uh, but yeah, so the PC. Uh, for whatever purpose, has discovered that their patron or their deity isn't who they thought it was. Uh, maybe they're upset that the church hides uh, sex abuse scandals and wants out, uh, things of that nature. Uh, so I well, would I mean, use... speaking uh, uh, on that, you um, <clears throat> kind of call out a subclass, which I think is perfect, and it's a subclass I've always wanted to play for, a warlock. Uh, and You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong because I, I didn't read now... it. <laughs> yeah, I know you didn't. Read I did. It. I'm talking to David. There's now two undead warlocks. The mm -hmm. first one, I believe, is the Undying. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and that is um, that one is definitely your make a patron or you make a deal. Yeah, no, I want to live forever. And you're mm -hmm. like, yeah, no, I'm living forever. And then someone chops off your hand. And then all of a sudden it's just like, oh, oh my gosh, it's still moving. You attach it and it reattaches itself and you start to decay. Zombies can't tell you apart from other zombies. Oh, yeah. And this is right along that line of, yeah, no, you get to live forever. I didn't say you'd stay young or healthy forever. You just get to live. <laughs> right. Or you don't get to reattach the hand. And now you're just That's called now your lefty. new familiar. <laughs> yeah, that's your new familiar. Exactly. <laughs> and you're an Adams. <laughs> so, yeah, those, those are our three ideas, folks. If you have better ideas and feel like sharing them, please go ahead and hit us up. You can hit us up at M Hobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail, and that also goes for if you want to participate in a Between the Rolls or a one-shot like next week. <clears throat> it was going to be this week, but uh, yeah. anyway, this is campaign week, so we'll go with the campaign at this time. <laughs> I will just put the caveat things could on change, that. folks. <laughs> things, things can always get weird. Uh, but we really appreciate your time. Uh, and again, we really uh, we want to see you on here. Uh, we want to have you prove that you can do a better job than us. Really, the bar is kind of low, so it's not that it's big really low. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, really I well. mean, you can top Frank real easy, guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, he needs it, new ideas for his one shots to steal from. That's We're right. GLP low. <laughs> just say I read the book and, and I'll just. <laughs> uh, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter Take a look at our YouTube archive If you want to shoot shit about D&D, &D, join our Discord If you want to buy our cool crap And it is kind of cool uh, Not really crappy, but kind of cool uh, Tinyurl.com Slash RPG swag It's down there uh, Thank you Pirate Dog Dice We don't use dice on this show uh, Unless it's Iron Sometimes. DM yeah. But uh, yeah. if you're looking for custom dice Hit up at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter and of course, Adventure Sense to make your game not stink uh, is always useful. Makers of the Shine system to help you write gooder coming in their next Kickstarter 
an RPG design version. Uh, so you can use it now for RPGs. They're coming with an RPG specific version. And of course, they're uh, 300 percent uh, funded Kickstarter for how RPG we can cat. Uh, I got an email about uh, delivering today. I did not get a chance to do it. It's been hectic for me. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., don't forget to tune in Thursday to watch Kyle fuck with his cred people. <laughs> uh, I will be there Saturday for the Calamity A at this time, unless things change. And yeah. then the tri generational Margu is on Sunday, and they are literally. Well, not yet, but they're literally going to be batshit crazy. Uh, folks, for all of us here, thank you very much. We will talk to you later. Uh, kiss and wave. Mwah. No. <laughs>